Foundation of Faith broadcast. This is the fourth session in our class on prayer, which is class six. Today we are going to be looking at various types of prayer. I remember, and I want you to note that this various type or categorization that we are giving to prayers is for us to understand the concept of prayer in depth. Uh, we are still expected to pray all kinds of prayer that we may require from time to time. Uh, and it's good that we know that they are not just standing alone. You, they can go with other things. Um, prayer can be categorized into two broad uh, theme. The first is categorization according to the number of people that are involved. Uh, the second is categorization based on the content and the purpose of prayer. Uh, the first category has about three types which I want us to consider as we go along. The first type is individual prayers. Um, individual prayer is very important. Individual prayer is when a person go before the Lord alone and pour out his heart to God, make a request to God, uh, pray before the Lord, um, and communicate with God, and commune with God, and share fellowship with God. It's, it's an individual thing. And it's, it's a conscious habit that we must develop as a Christian if we want to maximize the benefit uh, that belongs to us as a child of God or and as a Christian. And in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 46, you will read there that Jesus Christ sent the multitude away and he went into personal prayers. He sent them away. He said, excuse me, uh, let, let me go into prayers. But if you look at Luke chapter 2, 12, chapter 6, verse 12, he invited his disciples to pray with him. And then the disciples slept rather than pray. But Jesus Christ knows that his destiny is at stake. He, he knows that he requires the intervention of God. He, he, he knows that uh, what is at hand needs communication with God. It, it needs strength from the Lord. And in your Christian life and journey, you will discover that even when people around you decide to pray, you need to go on in personal prayers. Personal prayer actually is the strength of Christian. It is, is, is what we get into very deep as uh, we commune with God. So in your life, you will learn to pray alone. You will learn to stand in gap alone. And especially when matters that are very important to you are at stake. You may not find anybody to pray with you. And you may need to even send some people away so that you can pray alone. The second type in this category is prayer of agreement. Prayer of agreement, you will see that in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, where the Bible says, if two of you shall agree together concerning a thing, it shall be done unto you. So prayer of agreement is the prayer you, you share with two or three or more people, making a particular request that all of you have agreed to God. Now, the word agreement is what is important in the issue of this type of prayer. Um, you must share with one another to the point that all of you agree. You, all of you should not just jump into prayer and begin to pray what one or more of you does not agree. It has to be prayer of agreement. If you shall agree, that's what the scripture says, then it shall be done unto you. Uh, and if you are married, your wife is a good prayer partner that God has ordained for prayer of agreement. And you will see that he or she will become 
a, a regular prayer partner, you know. And that's one of the advantage of having a spouse, you know. And then you now need to put things together in prayers before God after agreement. The third type in this category is corporate prayers. They are the prayers that we pray in church. And we must understand that public prayer and private prayers are different and are important as well. Corporate prayer is the one that brings all of us out with other people, we are praying. And if you join a corporate prayer, uh, you need to, to, to respect the other. You need not to distract other people. You, you need uh, to join them so that all of you can have focus to God. Then in the second category, which is the prayer as to the content, we, we have this prayer of consecration, which is the prayer where we, we get right with God. You know, as a Christian, at times we may just get cold for so many reasons, you know. But the important thing is that God expects us to come back. God is not, once you miss it, God wouldn't say, that's all for you. He encourages us to come back in boldness through the blood of Jesus Christ, confess our sins, cry unto God that God should make us to be in line with him again. First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, if we, if, if, we, if we commit sin and we confess our sins, God is ready to forgive us and to align us back to him. We, we, must, we must not be embarrassed that we fall short of the standard of God, which is what sin really means. And as a Christian, no matter our height in God, no matter our experience in God, when we find out that we miss it, we must confess our sins. Somebody say, ah, when you are born again, do we need to confess our sins again? Yes. As often as the Holy Spirit convinces you that what you just did was wrong, then you need to confess your sins to God, and God will make you right with him. We will continue on this note at uh, next session, and then um, take us to uh, another examples in this category.